Hello everyone, my name is Raufa Shemian and in this video presentation I'm going to present our work with the title Contention Aware Web of Things Emulation Testbed. This work was done as part of my PhD research last year at University of Calgary and currently I'm working as software engineer with uh, Cisco Systems in Calgary, Alberta. So Web benchmarking is generally established compulsion which, um, concept which goes back to the advent of web. Um, benchmarking tools evolved as new concepts and technologies such as web2 were added to the web. And Web of Things is an example of these new concepts. Web of Things is a way of enabling um, Internet of Things devices to use existing uh, web infrastructure to communicate and eliminate the need for using new client applications uh, other than web browser. Uh, to enable Web of Things, in addition to the existing HTTP protocol, Constraint Application Protocol was developed in the last decade um, to enable restful communication between um, resource-constrained IoT devices. So, Web of Things is an example of these new concepts that motivates the need for new benchmarking tools that support these protocols and uh, can enable users to measure workload dependent uh, effects in a Web of Things environment. One way to achieve this goal is to use real test beds. Um, however, real test beds are not always available. For instance, uh, due to budget or time constraints, researchers or developers may not get uh, access to a real test bed to do their in benchmarking study. So this brings us to the emulation tools. And uh, so limited resource footprints of the Web of Things devices enables us to emulate a system consist of large number of devices on commodity multicore machines which are available. But uh, the problem is that in this scenario, if there is resource contention for the um, hardware and operating system resources in those machines, um, it may affect the result of the emulation study. So in summary, the goal of our study was to develop a scalable Web of Things emulation testbed while monitoring the impact of this resource contention and alert the users if this would basically uh, cause this, the test results to be invalid. So next I want to elaborate more on the specification of this em emulation tool and what are the use cases. So consider this example of uh, a co-op enabled environment um, Web of Things environment with multiple co-op devices communicating to a gateway which is basically a co-op HTTP proxy. Each device has its own uh, resources, a group of sensors and actors and then the user wants to use the web browser to read a single value or a trend of values from these sensors or basically change some setting in one of those actors um, in this system. So um, the goal is to emulate a workload uh, dependent characteristic in this um, environment. We want to emulate a large number of devices. We want to evaluate the impact of um, workload characteristics like request arrival patterns. And we want to be able to compare application layer configurations. For example, for co-op, there is congestion control uh, scenario in the protocol level. And we want to do all this, this considering the network characteristics. So we want to add a network emulation layer to this uh, system. So with these ob objective are, and objectives, our solution is Wotbench or Web of Things benchmark. Uh, basically, it consists of, it's like any other benchmark system, it consists of a test harness, a trace generator, um, resource monitoring module, and some reporting module, which can, um, basically create the core of Woodbench. And then we have Gateway Emulator, which plays the role of um, workload generator in a regular web benchmarking system. And then we have emulated uh, Wood devices. Mm, that can mm, I will explain 
how they work later and we also have used an existing um, container for network emulation um, in this setup so emulated word devices uh, we developed them using uh, libcoop library which is the c library for coop so they speak coop and then you can they can be configured using a list of resources that can be sensors or actors and we can configure service time for each resource and service time and the service time distribution and how we want to emulate it whether in a busy mode which requires the cpu resources or a sleep mode and we are running these what devices on docker containers which is a lightweight uh, light way of um, basically emulating multiple applications on a single machine and they can these are basically these can be optionally used in Votemage or can they can be replaced for any custom with any custom application that speaks Quap and still the users take advantage of the gateway emulator in this scenario. So the gateway emulator, as I said, it plays the role of a load generator in a conventional web benchmarking tool. Uh, we can either use realistic access traces or trace generated by a synthetic trace generator or the one provided by uh, Wattbench and then um, it's basically a simple asynchronous uh, single threaded um, application uh, in a busy loop it checks for the time to send next timestamp and if it's the time it will send the request then check if there is any reply from previous request available and if it's not it will go back to checking the time so it basically needs its own core to run um, but it's single threaded so if we want to for expansion we need to run multiple instances of um, gateway emulator on the system so one common issue in a benchmarking system is client bottlenecks that can um, impact the test results if they are not detected and then cause some basically wrong evaluation of the system. Uh, Votement reports the specification of the submitted workload by the gateway emulator. Um, Basically, the request inter-arrival time for every single request for the submitted workload. And this information can be used by the user to uh, evaluate whether the submitted workload was what basically was the expected workload based on the provided trace. In this example, we used the report um, that is generated by Wattbench uh, as the submitted workload and then created the the cumulative distribution function distributed function of inter-arrival time from that data and then compared it with what we expected from the workload and as you can see like in the zoomed area the, for the first 10 percentile the submitted workload didn't have any inter-arrival time less than around 40 uh, microsecond in this scenario 30 to 40 microsecond in this scenario well, but this only happened for one percentile of the request and then it didn't impact the overall distribution of the workload but in some scenarios if the inter-arrival times are all small and then the mean is really close to this capacity then um, it may mean that that system that gateway emulator system didn't have the capacity to submit that workload then the user can decide to add more gateway emulator to the system to emulate the same workload <coughs> so <coughs> next we look into how workbench components are deployed on a multi-core machine um, basically that is decided based on the benchmark configuration that is defined by the user so an ideal benchmark configuration should utilize the resources of the underlying platform as much as possible. At the same time, it should minimize the impact of um, contention for the shared resources of the system that I will talk about later. Um, some decisions have to be made when we design, design this benchmark configuration. For example, is one is the use of uh, processor affinity. If we want to just pin the 
like what device processes to the cores or not and that can be determined by running some simple experiments to just compare the two cases with and without affinity um, and the other example of decision which you can see in this case in this particular uh, deployment is that we avoided running the what devices on core zero and that is because we didn't want to cause contention between the um, the processes of both devices and then the um, operating system processes which are usually running on core zero. Uh, other thing that can be set in the benchmark configuration is the CPU share for each of these devices which can enable us to create a heterogeneous environment with dif devices with different capabilities. Basically that's a feature for the container that we can use to emulate that behavior. So we talked about the contention a lot so far, but what exactly we mean when we say contention for shared resources can impact the test results. So here in one example, we wanted to just show what is this effect and then we will describe how we want to detect such effect. So in this case, we ran the same experiment with the same per device workload and the same device specifications in terms of the service time it is deterministic service time per device and we change the throughput um, in a range for each of the three scenarios basically the only difference between the three scenarios is the number of devices that are emulated the workload is controlled so we are expecting to see the same result if we are measuring some um, application characteristics in terms of the response time. However, what we see is actually that for the 20 device scenario, the response times that we are measuring is higher compared to the five device and then uh, one device case. Also, I should note that we ensure that there is no bottleneck in the um, gateway emulator. And I should note that these low throughputs are because um, intentionally we use the busy loop to uh, basically be able to exaggerate this case so um, we were able to show um, exactly what happens so that's why the throughputs are quite low but um, basically this can show that the 20 device case the result is different than the one five device cases and it means that the test infrastructure, the multi-core server, had, didn't have enough capacity to emulate 20 devices in this scenario. While this is obvious in this case, because we had controlled workload with, um, with constant service time, either in a heterogeneous system with multiple device capabilities and multiple uh, resources with different response, uh, different service times, um, it is not easy to detect. At the same time, we cannot look at the we cannot always look at the resource usage for the underlying um, hardware to detect such contention scenario. Sometimes it may happen in the cache hierarchy or somewhere else, and we need some hardware level metrics to detect them, which is re which are really costly. So for this purpose, we came up with the idea of the contention detection module. Um, it's an instrumented lightweight. Uh, what device that we call it CD node um, and in this case <coughs> the basic idea is that when there is no contention in the underlying hardware the CD nodes response time is close to what we configured it for the service time however when the device nodes suffer uh, the, when the what devices suffer contention for a shared resource the CD node will experience the same contention and the measured response time for the CD node will deviate from the our expected service time and this way we can detect the um, ex the existence of contention in the underlying hardware so the solution needs that CD node an extra gateway emulator which generates load for the CD node and a controlled workload. So our controlled workload has two specific characteristics. 
One is that requests uh, should arrive sequentially with deterministic interarrival time. This is to ensure that there is no queuing time in the hard software level for the CD node. And the service time should be deterministic so we can measure any deviation from the service time in this scenario. Uh, this graph basically uh, uh, shows like for the same example that I explained here, this graph shows how the response time of the CD node changed for 1, 5, and 20 devices. The service time of CD node in this case were set to the same, uh, to be equal to the same service time for the actual devices. Um, and then, as you can see, in the same throughput that the 20 device case uh, response time increased, uh, we'll see that the CD node response time also increases um, and we can detect this case of contention. Uh, so this response time deviations um, basically show us what is happening in the system in case we didn't know the result from the test which is the the norm in regular tests so we measure this response time deviation based on the difference between response time um, and service time divided by the expected service time of the uh, C CD node so I next show some initial evaluation results for the CD module in these two scenarios, uh, we used um, both devices and we configured them to have the same mean service time um, in all cases. But in the, this case, the CPU intensive, we created a CPU intensive workload by setting the devices to run in busy mode, versus in the other case, we set it to, in, to run in um, sleep mode. As, and as you can see, we were able to emulate more devices in this scenario but at the end we hit a limit in the um, network and operating system level which caused the response time deviation so uh, so as you can see in both scenarios the cd node response time kind of followed the um, response time of the what devices as we increase the number of uh, emulated devices. Again, it's same throughput, same service time for the what devices, so we expect to see the same result as we change the number of devices. But as you can see in this case, we cannot go beyond 20 devices, and in this case, we cannot go beyond 90 uh, devices. So, yeah, this shows that the CD node can follow uh, the, um, the response time of the actual devices and then from that response time deviation we can detect the existence of the contention in the system. So in summary, Wattmensch is designed to be deployed on multi uh, regular multi-core hardware. Um, some use cases for Wattmensch are capacity planning, testing protocol configurations, for example, um, like the QA protocol congestion control system and um, also testing the effect of network characteristics on mm, the um, response time of the devices. Mm, contention in the share, we showed that contention in shared resources of multi-core machine can impact the emulation result and then we described the contention detection module um, that is designed to detect such contention and then basically report to the user whether this test was successful or not. And in future, we are going to focus on um, auto deployment techniques for Wattbench to basically automatically detect what is the best benchmark configuration in that scenario and more uh, focus on tu how to tune this contention detection module. Thank you and um, please send us if you, um, an email if you have any. Hello everyone, my name is Raufa Shemian and in this video presentation I'm going to present